Welcome back to my next playthrough series, this time Defenders of the Last Stand. I've done Defenders of the Realm here on my channel, and I'm quite excited to do Defenders of the Last Stand. It's kind of uh, Defenders of the Realm with about uh, 20 more additional things added into it, which will make it more complicated and I will probably mess up even more, but it looks extremely fun. I have played it a couple of times, I have not won it, and I'm making my life extremely difficult as well because I am playing with just one character. You can play between one and five characters. And I think it becomes more difficult the fewer rangers you play with. And so I'm going to play with one. So this will probably be a fairly short playthrough as I get my butt handed to me. Uh, there are so many rules and so many things to go over in this game that I am not going to bother. <laughs> because it will just be uh, a... 50 minute video explaining all of the details of the game. So I'm going to glaze over things pretty quickly and then we're just going to start playing it and we'll see all the rules unfold as we play the game. So it's basically a post-apocalyptic game. Uh, we are playing the second scenario which is just the basic replayability scenario in the game which means to win the game we need to, to defeat all four of the leaders uh, and I'll just quickly go over the leaders uh, in a moment. Uh, you can see the different colors on the board. We have green, which is Bama. Uh, he's the leader of the Road Riders. We have a we have red characters. It's Crank. He's the leader leader of the Techies. And then we have Bramble and Yellow, uh, the Earther party. And we have Puke over on the right hand side here, which there's you can't quite see them, but because the board is so huge as well. Uh, he's a mutation, and there is that. So, um, without getting over going over too many things, because it's just going to be too much to do, it plays very similar to Defenders of the Realm. So if you watch my Defenders of the Realm, you'll see a lot of the very same mechanics. There's basically three phases to each turn. There's a Rise and Shine phase where you replenish your actions for your turn and refresh any uh, used cards that, that have that ability. And then you're going to do actions. And because I'm playing with one player, I get to do seven actions on my turn. And there are a horde of options for actions. In fact, I'm not going to read them all, but if you want to just take a look at this, this is the action chart. These are all of the things you can do, including a whole pile of free actions. Uh, so I don't know how well it focuses, but that's all of the things you can do. And I'll be doing some of them, of course, as we do play through. Oh boy, all right, um, so what am I going to show you? Well, I am going to show you which character I'm playing. So I'm playing the old man because, hey, that's what I am, so we'll play the old man. Uh, he's the wizard of atomics, and his stats over here, he has three uh, for radiation. Uh, so to avoid getting mutations, we're going to roll three dice, two for uh, adventuring, five for tech and two for uh, doing collecting of these tokens, which is scavenging. I have a couple of special uh, abilities. Uh, it says, I may discard a defender card matching the color of one of the raiders in your location to defeat all raiders there. Additionally, I can discard a blue defender card uh, in combat with a monstrosity to roll two extra dice. So that's, my, that's one of my special abilities and hidden bunkers is another one. When ending your turn in a location with any number of radiation icons, draw two extra defender cards. Normally you just draw two defender cards at the end of your turn. If I end up on a radiation space, I can draw four. And I knows stuff. Uh, these are karma tokens, and you'll see some of them on the board. You may spend a karma token to use your ancient tech attribute number in place of any other attribute. So I have five dice I can roll for my tech. So I can use... If I have a Karma token, I can spend it to use roll five dice on any of the other uh, things. So that's a pretty cool ability to have. Of course, I don't start with any Karma tokens, but there are a couple very close to me that I'd be able to pick up. I start with seven action tokens, and that's what these look like. And when you flip them over, they are wounds. So when you take wounds, your action tokens become wounds. And then, of course, you won't be able to use them as actions because you're wounded. I start off with a mission. So there's a whole deck of these Ranger mission cards. And I start off in this scenario with one of them, and it is Defeat Earther War Parties. And 
Uh, they're the yellow ones on the board. My combat mission is to defeat four Earther war parties. And then I, uh, once I do that, when I succeed, um, I get a reward. And the reward is I can either draw one special card. Special cards are uh, really good buffs and bonuses you can get. Or I can get three defender cards. And defender cards look like this. These are the defender cards. And they come in different colors. They come in blue, red, uh, green, and yellow for the different factions in the game. I just happen to randomly get two puke cards, blue ones. And they have special abilities up here. So grenades can be used to destroy uh, oil and ammo depots, which are these black triangles on the board. Um, and a crossed gun symbol. If you have two of these, you can discard them to sabotage a leader that you are in the space with. Uh, doing one damage of health. So those are the two cards I start with. Uh, and again, so much information in this game, we will never, I will never cover the rules at all until we actually run into them while we're playing. Okay, I'm going to quickly, I might as well show you the leaders. Um, and so there are these uh, cards that come with the game and they just basically outline each leader. So it's easier to look at these than to try to go down and look at all of the player boards. So we'll look at Crank first. He's the part of the techie mob. They're a deadly gang of youngsters uh, obsessed with ancient technology. Uh, they will stop at nothing to unearth the riches of the past. So defeat to defeat the raiders, uh, the red raider techie guys, we need to roll a three plus on a die to get rid of them. Find an artifact. Anytime there is a techie overrun, Crank gains an ancient tech card. Place one face down near the leaderboard. Ancient tech cards, uh, tech cards buff up Crank's ability, and he gets more and more powerful the more tech his techie dudes find for him. Uh, gas attack. Rangers that end their turn with techies present suffer one wound for each techie present. So that's pretty nasty stuff. Uh, instead of just getting a wound, they're going to get one for each one of these guys present. Next up we have monstrosities, and they are associated with puke. Monstrosities are included... Um, Incubated in the most radiated areas. Many do not survive, but the ones that do are deserving the title of monstrosity and see below. So special abilities for monstrosities. Attacking a monstrosity. Draw a monstrosity card to resolve some combat. There's an entire deck of monstrosity cards. So you don't ever know exactly what the monstrosity is like, and that's why it says see below. And on your guard. Rangers that end their turn with monstrosities present either must discard a blue defender card or suffer two wounds for each monstrosity present. Ouch. That's pretty painful. We have the Earther War Party. Earthers are nomadic people. Unaffected by radiation, they believe God has granted them ascendance over the wasteland. So they're the Amazonian archer warrior types. They, we need a four plus on a roll of a die to kill one of them. They're blessed people. Rangers cannot use skills or special cards when in combat with Earthers. So I can't use uh, my Atomics ability, which is would be discard one yellow card and just uh, kill all Earthers. I'm going to have to roll dice to get rid of these guys. And they have something called Reign of Errors. Reign of Arrows. Rangers that end their uh, turn with Earthers present suffer one wound for each one present. So we get a wound for one of them. And then we have Bama's uh, Road Rider gang. Road Riders are deadly outlaw gang of bikers. They're uh, in constant need of oil and gas and they have their sights on last stands reserve. So they're the toughest guys to take down. We need a 5 plus to destroy them on a die. Wild Boys Rangers that end their turn with Road Riders present suffer two wounds for each Road Rider present. So these guys also give you the smackdown. So that's the lowdown on the character. So I will tell you, Crank starts with 10 health. Uh, Puke starts with 8. Um, our Earth of War Party leader named Bramble, she starts with 8 health, and 8 health also for Bama. Now we can sabotage these guys and try and knock down their health, which is a good thing to do, and we'll see that happening. Oh boy, what else to do? Okay, and there's also stages of the game. So we're in the first strike stage, and the setup for the scenario tells you which cards to do in which order. So the cards we were told to do is do 1B, 2B, 3B, and 4A. Of course, there's a 1A, 2A, and 3A for there's uh, two other scenarios in the base game. Uh, but first up, we're going to be doing First Strike. And so this is going to be uh, players draw one Raider card and two Defender cards. 
in the raiders and radiation phase, which is the third phase after we perform all our actions. Then we perform all the raider placements on the card. We'll see how that works. Then we activate the event on the card and then we advance the leader to the next location if applicable. And we will advance to stage two. So we're going to go to 2B if and when we slay one of the four leaders. So that's kind of where we're starting. Wow. And that's been over 10 minutes and I have basically explained nothing. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do uh, is I'm just going to start right into the game. And we're going to start playing this. I'll probably get uh, one full turn in here. So I'll go kind of slow and explain everything I'm doing. Uh, and that's going to be the first episode. So it's basically introduction and episode one. I didn't go through the setup. It's a relatively lengthy process. You're drawing cards, you're placing things on the board. Done it all. Everything is set up for scenario two, which is defend last stand. It's the generic scenario. All right, I'm going to turn off the camera here, do a bit of thinking of what I want to do with my seven actions. Um, and then we're going to come back. I'm going to perform my seven actions. And then we're going to do the Raiders and Radiation uh, end of turn round. And that will be round one. Okay, I've done some thinking. So I have seven actions I can spend on my turn. It costs one action to move over land. Uh, and you can only move over land across these uh, dotted lines. If you see a solid line here, you have to be flying in a hang glider uh, to be able to cross these. And that goes for the raiders as well. Puke is special because Puke has wings. Uh, and I never did show you the minis of these guys. They are really cool. If you're into painting, uh, this is Bama. He starts down here. This is Crank. Uh, here. And we have Bramble on a great big sort of musk ox mastodon looking thing up here. And we, of course, we have Puke, who's the flying monstrosity dude. So those are the main bosses that we have to get rid of. Okay, starting off, first thing I'm going to do is I am going to move one space. That's going to cost me one action. So I'm going to go from uh, last stand here to the south road. So that cost me one of my seven actions. Another action I can take is I can pick up karma tokens. Now you can pick them up if there are no raiders uh, in your location or monstrosities with you. So I'm going to spend my second action to give myself a karma token. Now remember, I can spend karma tokens uh, to use your ancient tech attribute number in place of any other number. And so I'm going to do that right now because the next thing I want to do is scavenge. Because there's a scavenge token here. Now on the back of these tokens are randomly put out at the beginning of the game. And the backs of them are random as well. I am going to be using the karma token that I just picked up. I'm going to spend that. So it's going to go back into the pile. And I will then be able to roll my tech number. Which is five dice instead of rolling two dice for scavenging. So I'm going to get to roll five dice. I didn't even show you the dice in the game. They are color coded. Uh, we've got red, green, yellow, and blue. There's three of each that come with the game. So when you're attacking raiders, you can use the appropriate dice. So I'm just going to take a five. It doesn't matter which color. And success in this game is on a five or a six. So I'm scavenging here in the south road. Let's see what I can get. So I rolled two sixes. So I successfully scavenge. So let's take a look at this token and see what it has to say for itself. So I did some scavenging. I got myself a common artifact. Well, that's cool because uh, it is always good to get uh, items in the game. So here's the huge deck of co common artifacts. Already shuffled, but I can give it another shuffle here. Uh, and we're going to get a common artifact. So we get, <laughs> we get a bazooka. Well, that's pretty cool. Spend an action to remove all raiders from an adjacent location. Then roll a d6. Discard on a 1 or 2 result. That is very cool. So we have a bazooka. I love it. Uh, I'd say that's an uncommon artifact. Now I can't use the bazooka here because as far as adjacency goes, we have a solid line here. We're not adjacent, so I cannot fire into this zone. But I can move here and then fire into that zone. Um, 
And so for one more action, I still have four left, don't I? One, two, three. Yes, I have four actions left. I'm going to do a move action to Devil's Junction. I am going to spend another action to pick up this Karma token. Again, there's nobody in here, so I have another Karma token. And now I'm going to spend an action, and why not? Let's go ahead and use the Bazooka. So I spent an action, and remove all raiders from an adjacent location. <laughs> okay, wow. So we just bazooka these. Guys. Now this is adjacent, because there's a hashed line here. So all of these guys are removed. So the bazooka just uh, blows them off the map. I love it. That is such a cool item. Unfortunately now, uh, it says, uh, then roll the d6. Discard on a 1 or 2. So I may lose the bazooka if I roll a 1 or 2, but let's not do that. I roll a 1. Arr! So I lose the bazooka, but hey, we cleared out a ton of guys, so that just gets discarded. It was a one-shot bazooka, but man, that was, that was pretty good. That was awesome. And I think I have one action left. Now, I don't know. I wonder if I want to move to Barter Town so I can pick up this. Uh, or do I want to move here so I can maybe take on these raiders next time? There's three raiders here, and that's going to be a problem. Uh, I think I'm going to take my last action, and I am going to move down here to the hard road. And that concludes all seven of my actions. I've basically taken my turn. So now it's raiders and radiation turn. And so, of course, consulting this again, I'm going a little bit slower here because, uh, again, try not to mess up rules and trying to kind of explain the game, how it plays as we go along here. Players draw one Raider card and two Defender cards. And I do believe you draw your Defender cards first. Uh, so I'm going to do that. So these are the Defender cards. I just took the two off the top. So I got another Puke one with a hand grenade. And this time I got a Crank card with a crossed uh, gun symbol. Now these dice you're seeing here are used when you attack the leader. So if I attack Crank, I could use this card to roll one die against him. Because uh, you can directly attack them or you can sabotage them. The idea is, of course, you want to get them to zero hit points and kill them. And this could be an impossibility with just one player, but hey, giving it a try. So now our hand looks like this. Oh, and I should say, in a solitary game like this with just one character, you have an unlimited uh, amount of cards in your hand. It's 12 cards in your hand if you play with two, two to five characters. One are unlimited if you just play with one, like I'm doing. So this now I have two grenades, uh, I have a pair of crossed guns, and three puke dice, and one crank. So that's my hand, the end of turn one. Now we have to process a raider card. And you'll see the anatomy of the raider card here as we process it. So how does this card work? Well, it has something at the top, something at the bottom, of course and another special text at the bottom of that. So we're going to add, you see one character, we're going to add one Earther War Party to uh, Zone 30. And Zone 30 uh, is right here at Demon Tooth Pass. So we're going to add one Earther Raider there. Now there's already an ammo depot here. There's already a um, Road Rider. Now we have an Earther. And we're going to add two red... Uh, techie dudes to uh, location 5 Mist City and that just <laughs> caused our first overrun so I'm going to readjust the camera here and we're going to do that overrun so I'll explain how that works all right so Mist City is right here now we need to add uh, two more techies to Mist City but guess what we're not able to because you can only have a maximum of three raiders not including monstrosities, uh, in a single location. So we're going to add the first of two. That's okay. Now we're going to add the third or the second techie here from the car, but that's going to put four techies in here. Not allowed. We have an overrun similar to Defenders of the Realm. When you get an overrun, you add an ammo and oil depot in here. Uh, and the special thing for... Um, well, let's continue the overrun. So we get an oil and ammo depot when you get an overrun in the location of the overrun. Each adjacent location, not including the solid lines, is going to get uh, the uh, colored techie guy 
that did the overrun. So we're going to get one going in here and one going here to the old mine. Uh, there's no cascading overruns in this game. Like there was in Defenders of the Realm, you can't just keep going and going. Uh, but So that's the overrun. Now, when you overrun on the techie guys, uh, what it means is Crank, and here's his ancient tech cards, because they've overrun in the city there, Crank is going to get an ancient tech card. And you can see there's a lot of them. And they give basically Crank buffs, which is not good. Uh, when you go to fight him, these get flipped over and he gets all the buffs. So we're going to give him one and it's face down. So we don't know which buff he just got. It could be he gets extra hit points, he gets extra defense, he gets all kinds of things. So this is going to go on Crank's card and that's going to be available for him if and when we actually attack him. All right, I'm going to zoom back out and we're going to process the rest of the card. All right, zoom back out again and let's continue processing this card. So we've done this. We did Miss City, which was an overrun. Bad news for us. And at the end, I'll explain how we lose the game because there's lots of ways. Now, this says here, Bama uh, could will move to South Road, number 21, and take two uh, Road Riders with him. But right now, Bama is in location 17. The next location, if you look at these crossed green gun symbols, this is the, the route Bama is going to follow. And his next location is Hard Road Apache Plains number 16. But our card says he wants to go to 21. Well, he can't because 21 South Road is up here. He will only ever go to the next location towards Last Stand. So luckily for us, he doesn't move. Had he been here, of course, and we got that card, then he would move here and you'd place two Road Raiders with him. So far, hasn't moved. At least that's good luck for us. And now there's usually on these, uh, different from Defenders of the Realm, now there's some special edition text on the bottom of a lot of these cards. So we're going to have to follow this now. So we get a Radiation Flare. Add one Radiation Token on or adjacent to a location with one or more Radiation Tokens. Heroes on a Radiation Token immediately test resistance. On a failure, they suffer one wound. So what it means is the radiation is flaring up. So we have to find a location in the board that has radiation. We either need to put a radiation adjacent to it or add another one to the location. And so with that in mind, uh, we can look around. We have a radi radiation here. Usually a lot of radiation on the outer edges of the board where the ruined cities are. And uh, what do we want to do? I think we get a bonus of getting additional cards when we end our space in a location with radiation. So I think, why don't we put a radiation here in Barter Town? And uh, because then when we go over there to get, uh, well, it doesn't matter. We're, it's adjacent to this radiation symbol. So we're going to put a radiation symbol here in Barter Town with the Karma token. And that uh, basically processes the end of that card. And that's basically the end of turn one. I don't think I messed anything up. At least I hope I have not. I will leave notes if I did. Okay, as promised, at the end here I'm going to explain how you lose the game. Which, of course, there are many ways. If any one of the leaders makes his way into Last Stand, you lose the game. There are 12 of these depots. Uh, if you place all 12 of them on the board, you lose the game. If you need to add any color raider or a monstrosity onto the board and you have none left, you lose the game. If you get four raiders, including monstrosities this time, in last stand, you lose the game. Uh, so those are all of the ways you can lose the game. I don't think I've missed any. Uh, and so let's then wrap up. Alright, so this is Defenders of the Last Stand. And we're playing a solitaire game. I only have, of course, me, the old man, taking on the four leaders. So that was a pretty good turn. Uh, we got a bazooka. We blew up some uh, guys uh, and yeah, so that's it. So this is uh, very similar to Defenders of the Realm, which I've done a playthrough here on my uh, channel as well. So thanks so much for watching along. Thanks for subscriptions and likes. I really appreciate it. 
Uh, join me next time for the continuation of this Defenders of Voss stand, and we'll see how long I can last. Hey, maybe I can take down all four leaders. So thanks so much for watching along. Join me next time for the continuation of Defenders of the Last Stand.